Waiters and waitresses, have you ever served a celebrity and what was it like serving them? Story one. I served Snoop Dogg about 10 years ago at Islands. He tried to order Dom Perignon, which we didn't have that, but he settled for a Sprite. For those of you that don't know, Islands is a sit-down burger joint that didn't have fancy champagne. He was there with three girls. I couldn't understand a word he said, but he ordered two meals for himself. His girls had to translate for him. Overall, he was polite and nice. He even signed autographs for a couple kids and my starstruck manager. I felt bad because he just wanted to have dinner and people were bombarding him. Story 2. I have the opposite of this story. I was in an Italian restaurant in NY a few years ago. It was during the day, a bit after the normal lunch hour, and the place was empty except for another table. Bill Cosby and a few friends were eating at the other table. They had a bunch of wine and Cos was pretty smashed. He then got up and started helping bus my table to everyone's delight. Yes, a drunken Bill Cosby cleared my table and brought my dessert. Story 3. A friend of mine used to be a waitress at a brunch place near Atlanta that Tyler Perry used to frequent. One day around the holidays, another waitress had only two tables, one being Tyler Perry and the other being some random patron. Apparently, this patron was a complete unpleasant person, extremely rude, complained about everything, and left her little to no tip. Meanwhile, Tyler was very nice and polite eating his brunch, reading a book, and chatting with the waitress from time to time. And when it came time for him to leave, he decided to leave her a nice $1,200 tip, wishing her a Merry Christmas and apologizing for the other random unpleasant person. Story 4. Summer of 1986, Billy Joel and then-wife supermodel Christy Brinkley come into the restaurant I am working at. The hostess that day was a teenage student from Ireland, visiting the U.S. for the summer. In other words, she had no idea who they were. When they asked to be seated, the hostess treated them like anyone else in a trendy restaurant at the beach on Long Island, on a busy summer day. She told them it would be a 30 to 45 minute wait. Then the hostess runs back into the kitchen, points to them, and asks us, what is that gorgeous woman doing with that ugly guy? Story five. I've served two. First was Ichiro. Embarrassingly, I am a huge baseball fan. I didn't recognize him at first until someone pointed out to me I was serving Ichiro. He had the most boring meal ever, cheese pizza and a cola. A crowd started to gather outside of people who did recognize him and we snuck him out the back. Second was Kristen Chenoweth. Wicked was in town for a pre-Broadway warm-up. Her and about eight other cast members came in after a rehearsal. They drank, they sang, they took pictures with everyone, and generally were a good time. Story six, I served Rashida Jones and Adam Scott. They were in town to speak at the local university. Both were super nice. I'm a huge fan of Parks and Rec, so I was really nervous. Adam asked me about the history of one of our side dishes as a joke, and I said something like, well, potatoes originally came from Ireland, and they laughed at my poor joke, so I felt good. It was them and three other people, I think they're publicists, whatever, and a person from the event. Rashida and Adam paid and both tipped 30%. Story 7. I was closing up a hotel bar a few years ago when a guy, about 30, lets himself into the closed, but not locked, restaurant section flanked by a couple huge men. I ask what I can do for them, gesturing at the obviously empty floor. He says, yeah, could I get a couple cases of champagne and three bottles of Grey Goose? Now, this was a business-oriented hotel, and we didn't make a practice of selling champagne by the case even when we were open, which in this case, we weren't. So I explain, I'm very sorry, sir, but we're actually closed for the night. I was just in the process of locking up the stock. You could absolutely hit the bar district downtown, as they're open for another hour, but this is the business district, and pretty quiet at this time of night. He says it's not a problem, turns around and heads to the elevator bay. I turn to finish locking up and see that the only other person in the room, a waitress, seems to be in the early stages of a cardiac episode. Apparently, I had just shut down Kanye West. Story 8. Will Ferrell, I was a bartender at the time. He was in town for a stand-up gig with Dimitri Martin, Zach Galifianakis, and Nick Swardson. We shut down half the bar for them and their crew for a football watch party. I remember Nick didn't even watch the game. He played Buck Hunter the entire time. They all kept to themselves and were all generally quiet. Will was the only one really known at the time. Funny thing, the other half of the bar was open to the public, but our only bathrooms were over there. We had bucket in the basement that Will would use to pour out the water in, to avoid everyone else. Will was not what I expected, he was kind of shy, and when they were leaving, he came up to me, shook my hand, and said I did a great job. Story 9. Not as a waitress, but a receptionist for a recording studio. Bill Murray came in to do some dialogue replacement for Garfield 2. He had called earlier for directions, I recognized his voice immediately and commended me on my direction, giving skills, and deemed me boss lady once he arrived. He had such a presence about him, shook everyone's hand around the lobby, and was genuinely kind. He and the engineers broke for lunch, Greek food, and after they were finished, 
I was walking down our hallway and could hear them coming around the same corner, so I decided to wait and let them pass. Bill came around the corner and saw me waiting. We locked eyes and he ran straight up to me. So what do you do when Bill Murray runs directly into you? You flipping brace yourself and chest bump him. The impact was enough to get a hot breath of feta and gyros in my face. Best moment of my life. Story 10. I have served a couple random celebrities. Drake? He was nice. He didn't really speak to me. His 20-person entourage pretty much spoke for him. They tip really well, though. Kim Kardashian? She was fine, actually. She was clearly in the restaurant to be seen. She was actually really nice to all the people who asked for photos. Polly Shore. Our restaurant happened to be having a fundraiser for a family that lost their son. He ended up giving a lot of money to them. Story 11. I bartended at Dave Chappelle's private birthday party. He kicked everyone out at the end of the night and came back in to have a drink away from his sycophants and assistants. He was the coolest except he spoiled the third-to-last Breaking Bad episode for me by acting it out word for word and dissecting every minute detail. But then he bought Estella and gave us a $100 dollar bill. Actually, he took the bill out of his pocket, lifted it above his head, then slammed it down on the bar and shouted, BAM! I am happy to still be a fan of his. Story 12. My cousin had Drew Carey come into his bar one night after a gig. Said he came in and bought a round for everyone in the bar. Cousin said he was a real classy guy and extremely friendly. At the end of the night, he called my cousin over and asked how many staff were working that night. He then pulled out a check and wrote it for an amount that ended up giving each staffer a $100 tip that night. Story 13. I cooked for Paul Newman a few times at a restaurant he'd visit in Connecticut. Not a fancy restaurant, just a bar grill. He was probably the most normal person you could imagine. Very laid back and polite. It seemed like he refused to accept the fact that he was a celebrity. I also saw him in Stop Shop grocery shopping. No fudge given. Just pushing a cart around buying cereal and bananas. Story 14. Not a waitress, but a hostess. I sat Peter Dinklage in a quiet corner of the restaurant. He asked for it. But I guess he didn't like what he saw on the menu and left a few moments later. He was very polite and soft-spoken, but seemed a bit shy. I was excited and nervous when he walked in and wasn't very sure about how I should treat him. I'm pretty sure my arse hasn't sweat like that since it did that day. Treating him like a regular customer seemed to have been a good call. Edit. No guys, no booster seats were used. Story 15. I served Rivers Cuomo lunch in Vancouver in 97. He was with Pat and some girls and were in town to open for No Doubt on a stadium tour. I waited until they were done eating to tell them how much I loved their records, and they asked if I was going to the show. I told them no because it was pretty expensive and I hated No Doubt. It just wouldn't be worth it for a 40-minute Weezer opening set in a hockey arena. He understood and we started talking about what they should do for the day. I drew them a map of some cool local stuff to do and he thanked me and they left. I see him talking to Pat outside and then run back into restaurant. He comes up to me and says, give me two names. So I give him my name and my girlfriend's name. He says, see you tonight. So I get home that night, tell my girlfriend the story and she's skeptical they will even remember. It's been hours. I remind her we have nothing better to do and nothing to lose and we head out to the venue. I get to the window, give our names, and the lady pulls out two laminated passes and instructs us to enter through the backstage entrance. We literally walked straight into Gwen when we hit the green room. Didn't see the Weezer guys backstage, but when they announced five minutes to showtime, we asked if we could go down front. Somebody ushered us to the front row and Weezer opened with Jonas. It was awesome. The end. Story 16. My best friend once waited on Jason Siegel and Paul Rudd during SXW. She was caught off guard when she saw them sitting at her table. So the first words out of her mouth were, You're Jason Siegel. You have a really nice banana. She had recently seen Forgetting Sarah Mark. His words, Hey, thanks. Can I get a whiskey on the rocks? She said Paul Rudd was equally as friendly, and they left a huge tip. Story 17. Billy Corrigan got my friend fired. He came into the restaurant we used to work at together and didn't tip. My buddy saw him on the beach the next day and asked him why not, Billy, then proceeded to go back into the restaurant to tell on my friend. He got fired. I waited on Nancy Kerrigan and her son. She split a meal with her son. I also waited on John Lovitz and family. He was a grumpy, mean, illegitimate child. Once I waited on Charles Barkley as well. Super nice, good tipper, always respectful. My favorite was Alice Cooper. He used to come into the Olive Garden I used to work about once a week with his family. He was about the nicest guy you could imagine, really nice family and down to earth. I also once had the opportunity to wait on Eddie Vedder. Pearl Jam is my favorite band, so I was totally starstruck. I waited until after he was done eating so as not be a bother. Just went up and said, thanks, man, I really appreciate you and your music. Thanks. He made great eye contact and just said, rock on, man. It was perfect. Story 18. I've dealt with quite a few over my years, waiting tables, bartending, and delivering pizzas, mostly in St. Louis and Little Rock. 
Highlights, Bill Clinton, came in with Mary Steenburgen on one arm and this gorgeous tall woman on the other. Has the softest hands. Easily the most charismatic person I've ever met in person. He visited several times and always remembered my name despite the fact we never had a conversation over 10 seconds long. Ted Danson, super tall, friendly, funny, easygoing. Judge Reinhold, he was a regular at one place I worked. Weird fella, not very friendly, really likes soup. Cliff Lee, see him a lot in the off season he lives nearby. Friendly but reserved. We have a mutual love for the saint. Louis Cardinals, despite his affiliation with the Phillies. Nelly, always nice to me, but surrounded by assholes at all times, except for Chingy, who always tipped well. Jessica Alba, gorgeous, smiles a lot, was friendly and tipped well. Reese Witherspoon, tiny, was dressed down, ball cap, sunglasses. Not into being recognized at the time. I tried to respect that and didn't interact with her more than necessary. Story 19. I'm not a server, but I did caddy at an exclusive golf course for many, many years. I spent many hours and days with most of these people, mostly sports stars. Tiger Woods, complete and utter asshat. Terrible tipper, no small talk, and just generally got the feeling he thought he was better than anyone else. His old caddy, Stevie, is one of the worst people I've ever met. He nearly got kicked out of the tournament due to his jerk remakers to very nice members who tried to engage him. Mark Fox, now Denver's head coach, Incredible guy, very affable, and completely down to earth. Great tipper, and just a joy to be around. I was ready to suit up with shoulder pads and play hard for him by the end of it. Jack Nicholson, he looks very, very old these days. He wears beaten clothes and generally couldn't careless about his golf game. Wild hair, simply doesn't care about his looks. Total badass. Kevin Costner, great guy, very low key, and after his round, invited the whole caddy staff to his house in Aspen for a July 4th party. He played guitar, sang, and threw the baseball around on his private baseball field. He's kind of quiet, but very gracious. Adam Scott. Oh no, this guy is good looking. I'm far from liking my own close relationship, but he is a striking guy. Really funny and really easygoing. He is liked for a reason. Most Aussies are really, really cool. Condoleezza Rice. Extremely sharp woman. And I mean extremely sharp, strikes me as one of the most intelligent people around. Solid golfer, good tipper, and a super nice woman. I like her a lot. Bill Gates. I've spent lots of time with this man. He's spacey, he's antisocial, and his mind is always somewhere else. He rarely even speaks to his guests at the golf course. He rarely gets excited, rarely shows emotion, and is tough to talk to. With that said, he is very nice and very attentive to instruction. He really is on another wavelength than most people I've met. Warren Buffet, one of the nicest men you will ever meet. Wears old trousers, beat up golf shoes, and generally couldn't give two how he looks. He uses old golf balls, old clubs, and is probably the least pretentious person I've ever met. Can't say enough about him. Love this man. Roger Goodell. Didn't realize he was a ginger. Tall man and very commanding. He is very gracious, funny, and seems to truly care about input from caddies. Usually tips and usually treats everyone very nice. Sharp guy. Dan Marino. A few negatives here. Never tips, never smiles, and is a bit standoffish. I get an air of elitism with him. He does seem to look down on the working man and is not a coveted loop. He's okay, but not a very likable guy. I could go on and on, but in general, everyone is on their best behavior on the course I worked at, as it is very exclusive and very hard to get on. Not many celebrities throw tantrums or act out. Story 20. James Woods. Nothing out of the ordinary, really. Pretty decent tipper, master of the fake phone call when someone would try to approach him. I told this story in another thread as well, so have this copy-paste job to feast your eyeballs on. A lot of people seem to dislike him, but he was home visiting his mother a few years ago and went out to lunch with her at the restaurant in which I was employed at the time. As he was leaving, another table with a young man who had Down syndrome was also leaving. This young man was wearing a Family Guy t-shirt and must have recognized James Woods. And after a short conversation, James turned around, said, Ooh, a piece of candy, and then proceed with his exit. The look on the young man's face was priceless. And just to get it out of the way now, Her, ye, are that happened? A her dur dur story 21. I have served tons. Al Gore was crazy nice. Even shook my hand when I came to the table. Ha <laughs> ha. He tipped 40% as well. Rashida Jones was nice. She had drinks with three seeming boy males and they just laughed and had a great time. We were also dead when she came in and no one was bothering her. Leonardo DiCaprio was very shy. He hid himself very well. I didn't even realize who he was until after five minutes of talking to him. He was working on his Boston accent, I guess. Natalie Portman came in with Harvard friends and used a fake ID. The waiter was like, whatever, here's your drink. I made said drink. Tommy Lee Jones was crazy awkward. His wife was really nice and basically apologized for him the entire time. I really don't think he was trying to be a banana. He just doesn't know how to be social. Story 22. I was bartending at a country club in Jacksonville at the time. We were having a large golf event that weekend. 
where club members would bring their guests for the tournament and the buffet dinner. During the slow part of the day, when people would trickle in from the golf course and have a drink or two before going home to get ready for the night's festivities, a group of four men walk in. Two of them grab a table, one of them goes to the bathroom, and Dan Marino walks up to the bar. I greet him, ask him how his day was and what he'd like to drink. He orders a Jack and Cola, tips me 20 bucks, and heads back to his table. No biggie. Anyway, a year later, he came in for the same golf tournament and orders the same drink. This time I decide to not be as coy. I say, I saw your last game ever as a Dolph. It was a blowout loss at Jacksonville in the playoffs when I was a kid. He laughed and said something along the lines of, yeah, not my proudest moment. What's your name and how much did I tip you last time? I was shocked that he remembered I served him a year ago. I tell him my name and the amount he tipped me. And he takes his drink, gives me a 50 and says, I'm sure we'll meet again, Uncle Mayor. Flash forward a year later. I had moved to Miami and was bartending at a Mexican restaurant. Dan Marino had come in one night for dinner and was sitting at a table away from the bar. I told the very hot bartenders I worked with that I was on a first-name basis with Dan Marino and that I knew his favorite drink and that I could prove it if he came up to the bar. This was a huge gamble on my part since I wasn't sure if he'd order the same drink or that he even remembered my name from a different city from a year ago. At the end of the night, the restaurant clears out and Dan Marino leaves. I'm cleaning up behind the bar, disappointed, getting ready to close things down with the girls, when Marino walks back into the restaurant and comes up to the bar. I take this opportunity to yell, Dan, long time no see. How are you, Jack and Cola? To which Dan replies, Uncle Mayor, what brings you to Miami? And yeah, I have time for a drink. The girls were stunned, and their jaws practically hit the ground. After his drink, he leaves me a $100 bill and says we'll meet again. Story 23. I served the Dalai Lama at a Greek restaurant up here in Binghamton, New York, back in August of 1999. I'm serious? It was during a dinner service, and vans pulled into the parking lot. Several Buddhist monks and about 20 people came in as a group. Religious groups are notoriously bad tables. Usually, you have a ton of people, nearly all of them only having coffee or a cookie. A lot of work with little reward. So, when this group came in, waitresses started hounding me to take the group. I grudgingly agreed. Me and one other waitress took the party, 25 people in one dining room, the restaurant has three, for the two of us. When the group came in, I was pulled aside by one of the monks who told me, when dinner is served, you must serve the monks first, and you must not make eye contact with his holiness. Now, it never, never occurred to me that this could possibly be the Dalai Lama. So naturally, the first thing I did was look him in the eye when I took his drink order. It was a non-eventful meal. They actually ate very well. And I did notice that the room would go silent when His Holiness, the monk at the head of the table, spoke. After they left, we realized they double-tipped. They were told their group would get hit with the gratuity on the check. They also left a cash equivalent on the table. Anyway, a day or two later, my boss excitedly pulled me into the bar. Look, he said, pointing to the TV. There, speaking to a congregation of hundreds of thousands of people in New York's Central Park, was the Dalai Lama. See the monks in front of him? That was my table. Story 24. I used to manage a sort of fast, casual, cafe-style restaurant. It was always incredibly slow on Saturdays due to its location. We were working with only myself and one server, pretty much just trying to run out the clock until we could lock up, which was unfortunately still a few hours away. My server was taking her break, so it was just me working behind the line when this woman walks in by herself, carrying a few bags from the nearby Neiman Marcus store. I couldn't help thinking to myself how much this woman looked like Cameron Diaz, but it obviously couldn't have been her because why the hell would Cameron Diaz be in Minneapolis randomly? She asked what soups we had, and I offered her a sample. When I mentioned that our house soup contained pasta, she quickly exclaimed how much she loves pasta, and her eyes lit up with excitement. I keep analyzing her face, trying to find some sort of distinguishing mark so I could be like, oh, she'd look like Cameron Diaz, but she has a different nose, or something along those lines. I could not find anything. Even her smile was spot on. But come on, why would she come into my restaurant? In the meantime, a friend of mine who worked nearby walks up in the midst of my assisting the woman. I got this woman a bowl of the soup and rang her up. She was super friendly throughout the entire transaction and threw a couple bucks in the tip jar for a $5 bowl of soup. Then I helped my friend and go sit down to bother him. I sat down and told my friend, Oh no, I can't shake how much that woman looks exactly like Cameron Diaz. He explained to me that when he walked up, he said something along the lines of, Good afternoon, Miss Diaz. How are you today? I guess she smiled and responded that she was doing well, and even asked my friend how he was doing. She sat and finished her soup by herself and even cleaned up her table, which is more than half of the patrons at the restaurant usually did. 
and went along in her merry way. It turns out she was dating A-Rod at the time, and the Yankees were in town, which explains why the hell she would be in Minneapolis. Story 25. Had the honor to serve a lot of great people over the last two years at a restaurant I worked at, with the exception of, like, one person. Chin Han, the Dark Knight. Very quiet. Always comes in alone with a book, eats in the corner, and barely says a word. Dolph Lundgren. Served him and his GF on three separate occasions. Really awesome and just a nice guy. Even let me take a picture with him. You can dig through my history. Craig Thomas. Almost came in weekly, occasionally with Carter Bays, and is one of the nicest person I have ever met. He is always thankful and appreciative, even when you bring some extra napkins and prefers to address people by their name. Sometimes he comes in with his wife and his little boy, and they are just a great party to serve. Apollo Ono. First impression, shower. Second, third, fourth impression. Very nice shower. Reese Witherspoon. Sometimes when you see a celebrity in real life, they don't exactly look like they do on the screen. Reese Witherspoon looks exactly like she does, and it took me a fraction of a second to instantly recognize her. She was polite and felt the need to carry conversations with the waiting staff. Minka Kelly, Jesus. You think she's hot on TV or through pictures? I don't know if I have ever seen a more beautiful person in real life. Every time I served her, I swear I stuttered and couldn't get myself to make eye contact with her. Just like everyone else, was very nice and never acted like she was entitled to anything. Alanis Morissette, Jesus, literally, looked like a female Jesus. Cam Christopher Robinson, The Crows, always comes in with his family and wants a secluded table and is always apologetic about anything he needs or wants. Brendan Frazier, good God does this tower of a man drink and drink and drink. At one point, he asked that I just keep bringing alcohol as often as possible. I think it was lunchtime that I served him, too. Sarah Michelle Geller and Freddie Prince Jr. Age has not served them well, but it was so nostalgic serving them. They were the celebrities when I was growing up. Freddie is more outspoken, usually ordering for Sarah. I remember them telling me she was pregnant the few times they came in. Megan Fox and Brian Austin Green. Now, I always thought Brian Austin Green to be a douchey kind of a guy but absolutely one of the most down-to-earth and nicest celebrity I have ever served. Miss Fox barely speaks a word throughout the entire evening with Mr. Green doing all the ordering. He even takes the time to walk around and chit-chat with other staff, managers, bartenders around the restaurant. Tyra Banks. This is the exception. She came in and sat down. Now, usually I never acknowledge a celebrity because I always assume they want to be treated just like any other customer. Miss Banks here threw a fit when I did not verbally recognize her and caused quite a scene. My co-worker told me of another instance shortly after where she walked into the restaurant, looked around, and then stormed out. Eldon Campbell. He came into a frozen yogurt store that I worked at when I was in HS, and being starstruck, I asked him if he was that one basketball player. He was nice enough to still sign me an autograph. Barbara Streisand. She also came into that frozen yogurt store. Took her literally 20, 30 minutes to order two pints, one chocolate, one vanilla. I was really shocked that it took someone so long to order something so simple, but she was really nice and just a pleasant person, so I couldn't help but enjoy the experience. Cow. I didn't think this would turn out so long. Apologize for any grammar mistakes. Generally, celebrities are no different than anyone else, and they especially like being treated as if they weren't any more special than the next person with the exception of a few. Story 26. I didn't serve her, but I was at a restaurant and I was sitting next to Rachel Ray. She was really snippy with the bartender waitress. She took forever to tell the waitress what she wanted. When she finally got her food and they asked how it was, she just kind of motioned as if to say, whatever. I didn't see how much she tipped, but on her way out, someone asked for an autograph, and she replied, don't talk to me. Also, I did cook for the director of Oz the Great and Powerful and one of the writers. I had a few drinks with them as well. Really fun, guys. I brought them back into the kitchen and they signed my Wizard of Oz apron. Edit. Okay, I am now aware that Sam Raimi is a bigger deal than I realized. I did not know that he directed Spider-Man and Evil Dead as well. Story 27. I waited tables for Outback in the 90s. I've waited on. Oscar de la Hoya was with a crew. They were flipping animals and ran the cow out of me. Didn't tip well. Davy Allison, former NASCAR driver, now deceased, was with his wife. They were pleasant. Gary Anderson, SP, former NFL kicker for Steelers, I think it was. Total unpleasant person. Very rude. Charles Barkley on two different occasions. Very cool, laid back, and friendly. The Spin Doctors, 90s band known for the song Two Princes. Really cool guys and a lot of fun Demi Moore when she was filming for G.I. Jane. She was alone. We let her in early before the place opened. She was as nice and kind as anyone I've ever met. No, I didn't ask if I could rub her crew hair. Story 28. Robert Downey Jr. came into a bar I briefly worked in. I've never seen anyone so lit. He was so drunk or high, it seemed like he was acting the part of a crazy sloppy drunk. 
He was quite happy and pleasant, though, even though he could hardly stand. I refused to serve him and let the manager take over. I hear he later went into rehab and eventually returned to his acting career, but at the time, it wasn't a pretty sight. Story 29. Work at a film studio. Mike Myers filmed Love Guru with us. Total unpleasant person. We were given rules we had to follow when he was in the room. No one was allowed to talk or look at him. Even passing him in the hallway, no eye contact. He would walk through the building and throw trash on the ground. Literally, he'd be drinking cola, finish the can, toss it on the ground and keep walking. We all cheered when that movie flopped. Story 30. I waited on the drummer from Green Day in New York. He had a show at Irving Plaza that night. He asked me if anyone said I looked like Will Ferrell, and I said, sure, I've heard that before. I responded with, does anyone tell you that you look like the drummer from Green Day? He simply replied with a yes. Are you the drummer from Green Day? Another simple yes. Overall, a very nice guy. Came in with a super hot chick. She paid. Story 31. Vigo Mortensen. Aragorn fudge, yeah. Down to earth. Friendly. Looks badass, even in his everyday clothes. A little backstory. I was working as a bagger in a large supermarket in Denmark, and I packed some of his things. He had bought some plastic animals for his nephew or something. The reason he was in Denmark was probably to visit his aunt who lives in my hometown. I also met him when I was a lot younger and I went to a drama summer school, and he gave us a little pep talk and took some pictures with us. I really had no idea who he was at the time. Story 32. Worked as a manager at a popular restaurant downtown, and I get a call that I should come to the cash registers. I was MOD that night, so I expected something like, we need change or he can't pay. So I arrive, and the cashier points me towards one of the largest person I have ever seen who is standing at the entrance. I walk over, a little bit edgy because he looks like he can use one hand to crack my head like a walnut, say, Good evening, how can I help? And his response, I am with Denzel Washington. Can we have a table for six? So, I look around, but I can't see no other person. But then he points at a group of people standing a little bit further, and after walking over there is Denzel Washington. He comes over, grates me very polite and asks me if it would be possible to get a table for six without any paparazzi, finding out that he is at the restaurant. I organize a table in one of the corner areas away from the main floor. He sits down, asks for my name, and then we start talking about our wine selection and what wine I really like. So I mention one of the wines which I thought was really great, and in return he orders four bottles of it, tells me to drink one with the chefs at the end of the night, and leaves a dollar five hundred tip for the staff. Coolest guy ever, but very adamant that he would not sign any autograph. But it's okay we had the wine instead. Story 33. Saw me struggling from the back to get in a group photo with the president during a DNC fundraiser. Pulls me to the front and puts his arm around me so the focal point is Billy Clinton me in his loving embrace. I am the guy looking like a sucker next to him. Tony Hawk was cool as fudge and tipped me $200 on an $80 bill. I worked at his favorite restaurant so he came in often. Dave Mustaine was a whiny, unpleasant person and complained that he didn't get the proper number of carrots with his dinner. Almost threw a tantrum over his flipping carrots, even though I brought him all the flipping carrots I could find. Still a huge fan, but that was lame. Sean White remembered me from skating his backyard ramp in high school and gave me a huge fiver and a hug in front of many chicks. Shane Dorian, my favorite surfer, gave me one of his brand new, never-been-surfed John Carper surfboards out of his car after I was pretty much gushing like a schoolgirl. Junior So tipped me huge on a dinner bill. Jenny Craig acted like I stole something from her when I ran through the rain to return a $500,000 brooch that fell off her coat in the restaurant. Joan Crock was a humongous bad person, all around. Wolfgang Puck is the most conceited, separated from reality person I think I have ever met. Will Smith is very needy. I worked at some pretty snazzy spots. Made way more money than I do now with a career. Edit. Oh, I should also add that the guy poking his head into the right, Clinton's left, is this guy. He wasn't famous at the time, but he is now. He was alongside Benicio Del Toro in Savages as a gangster and in a bunch of other cow. Story 34. I had the pleasure of serving a quite a few, actually. Apparently, one of the guys from Boys 2 Men married a girl from my hometown. My wife had been doing catering and through a few connections, she found out that they needed some servers at the wedding, so I jumped on board. Mike Tyson was at my table. Also, Joe, the I want to know stutter guy. There were a few dozen other pretty famous people at the affair, way more than I would have expected to show up, given that Boys 2 Men hadn't exactly done much in the previous decade. There were supposed to be a lot more, but the wedding was held around the same time as Aliyah's funeral, so I guess a quite a few big names couldn't make it. Granted, I didn't interact at all with any of the selbs. It was a wedding, so I literally just put the food drink in front of them and cleared it. The guys from Boys 2 Men talked to us a bit. They were incredibly nice guys. Joe sang, I want to know to the bridegroom. That was more funny than anything. Story 35. 
served John Oates at an Ramp B function in Philly. He is a very short man, served Ray Kurzweil at a luncheon in Irvine, California. He ate every bit of his food while munching on his vitamins. We ended up peeing in adjacent urinals later that evening. I considered crossing streams to see if the singularity would occur. Also, I served Slade Smiley recently. I didn't know who he was until a swooning co-worker pointed it out to me. Still didn't know, but he was a very nice guy and surprisingly witty. Story 36. I've worked in plenty of restaurants before, but my experience serving celebrities' food was, oddly enough, not in a restaurant. I have since moved up from serving food, but I worked with all sorts of actors, singers, athletes, royalty, politicians, and world leaders. I found the job on Craigslist, and I can't say where I work, but here goes. James Gandolfini was literally the first person I waited on at this particular job. Rip. He knew he was my first guest and was extremely nice, and when that happened, I knew I was working in the right place. Betty White is 1010 in every way possible, like the grandma I never had. The kind that gets you sick and ruin your favorite shirts all while making you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Pierce Brosnan was a banana. Pretty sure Mark Harmon beat his wife Pam Dauber, who is just a sweetheart. She used the old I fell down the stairs excuse while he was dead-eyeing her. Van Halen is a homie and loves his mac and cheese. I ended up cooking the food for Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. Good thing they're simple, both medium cheeseburgers and fries. Pianc is cool too. Gotta listen to Stevie Wonder cover Get Lucky with just me and his wife in the room the other day. No longer serving food at this point, etc. Before this job, I was a candy dealer. Miley Cyrus has been blazing since probably before you think. Having the Urza compliment candy you grew is all the tip you need. Story 37. I've personally served many. In my capacity as a Fampa B server at a large luxury hotel. I won't tell you who's horrible, but I'll talk about the good ones. The Scorpions were the best time I've ever had as a server. All of them plus manager and wives' girlfriends, a table of 12. Friendly, loudly giving their opinions of other bands. Def Leppard, ISS, Shicey, buying shots for me. Then when the manager objected, buying shots for him in the kitchen as well. Dennis Franz, a TV star from the 90s, was super cool. At the end of the night, he sat at the bar with a bunch of the staff and just chatted about whatever. I remember he asked each of us about our lives, what we did, how we got there, how we enjoy it or not made me feel interesting. Elvis Costello and his wife Deanna Krall are two ludicrously warm and nice people. Which is so odd, because I remember when Elvis started out, he was a right obstreperous little thorn. Bill Clinton bumped me into a table, causing me to spill wine. He grabbed my shoulder and announced to the table that the blunder was his. But, now you get to say an ex-president spilled wine on you. I was disappointed he didn't say, now you get to say an ex-president got you wet. I've never spoken to the... But I've served her twice in my career. I can tell you she is an, um enthusiastic eater. She finishes everything on her plate. All that's left is the glazed-in pattern. The dog couldn't get it cleaner. Story 38. Dan Aykroyd comes into my restaurant a few times a summer, has a summer house close by. His routine usually follows as such one. Calls in for takeout under the name Uncle Roy 2. Arrives. Picks up his order. Usually quite large as he's feeding a few people. He'll usually leave the girls $10 or $15 tip on his order. 3. He'll go out to his vehicle, come back in, and say he needs dessert. Then he'll purchase a whole pie, $13, and leave the girls another $10. 4. Out to his vehicle again, drop off pie, come back in, realize he needs drink. Buy $10 worth of drinks and leave the girls another $5 tip. He's a good dude, always humble and polite, 1010 would serve again. Story 39. Robin Williams and Steven Spielberg worked at a super small indie bookstore and we always hand sold our books. Robin Williams likes science fiction and bought Ender's Game and a book by Blake Lerat, the French equivalent to Banksy. He was extremely nice and told me about a Banksy price he has in his home. The only thing that I found off about him was this huge teal, maybe women's wallet he used. Steven Spielberg was with his whole family. He was super nice. Bought each one a book and a copy of The Pacific for himself. Generally quiet and generous. Edit. Also, Paul Giamatti. He was actually pretty grumpy. Wish I could remember what he read. Story 40. I was a server at a very famous New Orleans restaurant where famous people came in regularly. Drew Brees is a great tipper, and his children are very well behaved. His wife is a sweetheart. He's the only celebrity I ever really got starstruck around. I'm a huge Saints fan. Bon Jovi drinks House Pinot Grigio and puts ice cubes in the glass. You can take the boy out of Jersey? Kelly Ripa looks like an alien in person, but is very polite. Billy Joel is a total unpleasant person, demanding things off menu on a very busy night and being rude to staff. Hulk Hogan did blow in the bathroom. Brad and Angelina are wonderfully nice. Brad is way shorter than I expected. Bill Nye, the science guy, is very down-to-earth and a good tipper. Every famous athlete I've ever served 
mostly Saints players, order steak well done. Flipping yuck. The guy who plays Eric Northman is just as attractive in person. Mostly, musicians are better tippers than actors, and they're better tippers than athletes. In general, story 41, I served Morgan Freeman once. He came to the restaurant I was working at for lunch with his publicist. It was 11.30 and he ordered a whiskey neat. Then another, then another, then another. Four, four, flipping whiskey neats before 12.30. That's why he is always so sleepy, he's flipping drunk. Also, a lot of people call me Journey, and that's what was on my name tag. He said when ordering the fourth whiskey that he'd call me Trip for short. Story 42. Wentworth Miller, the guy from Prison Break, came into this coffee shop I worked at really early in the morning. I wasn't sure if it was him, so after he ordered, I said, You look like Michael Schofield. He said he heard that a lot. While I was one my break, he came up to me and admitted who he was. He was visiting his sister at the college in town. Normally, I would have tried to keep it short, but he genuinely seemed like he wanted to chat and was a pretty normal guy. I'm straight, but oh no, he is a beautiful human being. I would let him break out of my prison. Story 43. I've served four in a pub in London. Ashley Judd. Really nice, so beautiful, perfect skin. Really short. Cillian Murphy. I mispronounced the hell out of his name. I looked on his tab and asked if his name was Cillian. D-O-H. He was a bit perturbed about that. Also really, really short. Matthew Perry. He ordered a burger and salad. There was a bug on his lettuce. He very nicely asked for a different plate but kept the same burger. Jaquetta Wheeler, supermodel. So tall. Story 44. Ah! So this is the thread I get good stories to tell. In any restaurant, even if you don't wait on people, you inevitably will fill their drink, have a table next to them, or bring them their food. If you're a good server and have a good team, that's how it works. So most of these people I actually waited on myself. And a few were those cases. Adrian Brody. He played peekaboo over the booth separator with the little boy at my table and helped sing him happy birthday when we brought cake. The mom and I almost passed out and wet our pants. I tried saying hi to him as he left, came out mostly as a squeak, but I got a high and a wink in return. Someone else asked for a picture, and he obliged, which sucks that I was too embarrassed. He's my freebie. He tipped $1.30 on, like $1.80. The game, hip-hop artist, had the absolute sweetest, most gigantic security guys. Total pleasure to serve. They had great manners and ordered politely. The rest of his entourage were loud douche nozzles, and he himself actually passed out at the table at one point. They tipped nothing over the mandatory gratuity, left exact change. Pinky, Clifton Powell from Next Friday. May, he came, he ate, he paid and left. Adrian Peterson. Very nice, his wife, girlfriend, is beautiful and so is their baby. He eats like a flipping beast. Alfredo pasta with steak on it and a chicken ball. Cow, tips well, but nothing crazy. $20 or so on $60, Ish, I told him I wish I had nabbed him for my fantasy team that year. He laughed pretty heartily. He came back often, and I pretty much exclusively waited on him till I quit. Arian Foster Andre Johnson, some Texans defensive player who mattered not enough for me to remember his name. Show up, eat, a lot, pay, leave, tip decently. I made sure to wear my cowboy's tie when I served them. I left it in my locker in the back, specifically for moments like this. John O'Hurley, Elaine's boss from Seinfeld, has a very, very young wife, was quite nice, but she modded the balls ball out of her food, two cute young kids that they allowed to run amok. We served him a Snickers on a plate with a fork and knife, he chuckled, but not overly amused. Probably a douchey move on our part. LOL Jeffrey Zakarian. Oh dear God! He came in, his friends, and he ordered a bottle of wine, and I botched the flipping service twice! Twice! I was so mortified and I kept stuttering. Outside of Adrian Brody, it was one of the few times I almost lost my ball over a celebrity. He was actually pretty cool about it, I was so afraid he would be a banana like he is on TV. He ordered a Caesar salad, but swapped the dressing for a balsamic vinaigrette, which I've been meaning to try since his whole Ono oh table ordered that. Thank God he still tipped me at all, but he left a healthy 30%. The little couple, Bill Klein and Jennifer Arnold, they window shopped at a store next door for a while, got lots of crazy stares, but overall they are treated completely normal as they were regulars there. Meh. Chris Tucker. I have seen him there, sort of ignored him, but the famous story of my old restaurant is that when he first came in, he was placed in the section of our most senior server, who also doesn't give two fudge about celebrities. Older guy, hilariously awesome. He sat down. Server greets him. Hi, my name's Corbin. I'll be taking care of you this afternoon. Chris Tucker proceeds to lose his cow because of all the Corbin Dallas jokes. He actually forced the server to show him his ID. For proof, and the whole thing blew over, they had a laugh and now he comes in once a year with his mom. Always asks for Corbin. <laughs> There are dozens more, but I can't even recall all of them. Oh, wait. Tracy Morgan came in, 
and he was the most laid-back badass ever. He tipped amazingly. He is just as as he is on 30 Rock, and he was down to take pictures with anyone who asked. It was badass. Anyway. Yeah, I worked around a lot of celebrities. You really just get used to it at a point. Story 45. Once upon a time, I worked as a waiter bartender at the Charlotte Douglas Airport. Isaac Hayes. He was getting a to-go order, so I didn't speak to him for long. He said Trey Parker and Matt Stone are crazy guys. Vince Vaughn. Dude is tall. He said Swingers was his favorite movie he was in. Arn Anderson. Waited on him a few times. He's pretty quiet. Jerry Springer. Most awesome guy to hang out with. It was my second time meeting him. I bought him a beer while he talked to everyone else that came up. Some playboy. Boel model. Forgot your name, sorry. Super sweet girl talked to her most of that night and got her number. However, she lived in NYC, so no date came from that. Garrett Morris. Very funny, cool guy. He was there with Ella Joyce from Rock. There were others I met but didn't serve. Jason Priestley, Ric Flair, probably more. Story 46. When I was a server here in New Brunswick, Canada, Frank Mahovlich came into my restaurant with his group. He was here for a hockey thing. Anyway, there was a creepy portrait on the wall, and as I came into the small room where their table was, I heard him saying, it looks like that woman who chopped up your parents. I walked over, dead stare on my face, and started saying, Lizzie Borden took an axe. Gave her father's 40 wax, uh, when she saw the job was done, gave the left winger 41 inches. For those who don't know, he was a left winger for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He started laughing, called me Lizzie Borden for the rest of the night, and then requested that I was his private server for the entire weekend. He signed my Leafs jersey and a book I had from a game I had been to where he was the classic Leaf. Best weekend ever. I don't even remember how much he tipped, but it was a ton. I just remember how much fun I had when I would bring his food from the restaurant over to the show, and he would yell out, Lizzie Borden, you have my lunch. Story 47. I've served a bunch of celebrities. Elijah Wood, Susan Sarandon, Bruce Willis, Lindsay Lohan, Whoopi Goldberg, Aaron Paul, Will Arnett, and Amy Poehler, Scarlett Johansson, Joachim Noah, Sidney Rice, Schmidt from The New Girl. I've served other celebrities and athletes, too. Those are just off the top of my head. Most of them were super nice. Bruce Willis was a great tipper and a true gentleman. He came up and shook my hand and thanked me for the service. That was my personal favorite. Scarlett Johansson is super nice. Whoopi Goldberg is very down to earth, an incredibly sweet and nice person, also a great tipper. Aaron Paul was cool as hell. Sidney Rice and Joachim Noah were both very nice guys. The only real negative experience I had with a celebrity would have to be Timothy Hutton. Total banana. I gave him great service and he tipped me 10%. Edit. I've also served Peter Dinklage, Jonah Hill, the Jonas Brothers. There's more, but I can't think of all of them right now. A funny story also happened with Elijah Wood. Some 13-year-old kid walked up to him and asked him for an autograph. He said, Mr. McGuire, I'm a huge fan. I love the Spider-Man movies. Wood just looked at him and said, Sorry, kid, I'm not Tobey Maguire. Edit 2. Lindsay Lohan is a complete jackass. 